A very warm welcome to the GG.com horse racing podcast, recording on Tuesday, the 12th of November, live from Cheltenham Racecourse. We look across Presby Park and a beautiful scene. Uh, I'm Sam Turner. With me is GG.com tipster Kevin O'Malley and delighted to introduce our special guest Dave Massey from William Hill Radio. Good afternoon Dave. Very good afternoon sir. In this episode we'll be taking a glance over this weekend's feature action from Cheltenham and the Paddy Power Gold Cup meeting of course. We'll also be discussing the latest happenings in the world of GG.com and in horse racing. Um, we've got a fair bit of news that's happened in the last week or ten days. Obviously Tony McCoy's 4,000, Fleming Star's performance, Melodic Rendezvous. Just perhaps start with Fleming Star. Um, change of stable for him Kevin and were you pleased with his reappearance? Yeah he's split opinion again hasn't he? I have to say, on the whole, I think it was a good start for Fleming Star in the fur trio mm. chase. Uh, I think he overreached at maybe the fourth or the fifth fence, and from then on he was a little bit deliberate at a few of them. Um, but on the whole, you know, he left an awful lot to work on. After the last fence, he didn't really pick up as he usually did. He didn't find anything immediately, and Day's Hotel was just again on, on him a little bit at the line, but he was never mm. going to get there. And uh, it was a good seasonal debut. Um, Tony Martin is never going to have him sharp first time out, is he? There's bigger pots down the line, isn't there? There are. I've always been a massive fan of Fleming Star. I'm not overly convinced that he's a 7-1 to one shot for a Ryanair. Um, I'm yet to be convinced that he's a, a Cheltenham horse after last year's escapades and the way things have generally gone for the horse. But it was a good starting point mm. and uh, I look forward to seeing where he goes from here really. It was a confidence booster wasn't it Dave and, and talking of confidence boosters, Melodic Rendezvous, a horse we didn't see at the tail end of last year for various setbacks and niggles but bounced back to form in great style didn't he at Wincanton? You couldn't help really but to be impressed by him. Um, I think particularly given the pre-race vibes which were not good in the morning and resulted in a bit of a drift on course and, and the general form of the stable, which up mm. to Saturday had been mm. particularly poor, actually. A lot of their horses had been sort of backed in the week at, at sort of not all meets and been well beaten and, and not been winning well at all. So taking all that into account, the fact that he can come back like that, he, he got a couple of hurdles wrong, but in general he, he hurdled really he well. slipped on the home turn. Slipped on the home turn, took a bit of a stumble. And I think given all that to, to give way, I mean, strictly on what he did on Saturday, it wouldn't be anywhere near champion hurdle class. That's not the point. The no. point is we wanted to see what sort of shape he was in on his comeback. And I think we were given a definitive answer on that, that you, you've got a serious horse here for Mark. Do you think he's totally ground dependent? I wouldn't say he's totally ground dependent because we haven't really seen yet what he can actually do on quicker ground. Yes, he's got uh, some knee action to him and you'd yeah. think, that soft at some cut will certainly suit him but it would be difficult to say he's not totally grounded he would probably be taken more seriously as a champion hurdle candidate if the ground was to come up soft in March yeah well, you'd, I, I would think so if I think he'd be a towards the top of a lot of people's list oh, if he so. continues yeah. progressing yeah, yeah definitely um, one other horse that made his, his reappearance over the weekend was Grand Due um, what do we think of his uh, novice chase debut at Sandown the jury's out with Grand Jouet now. Uh, again, he was deliberate at his fences. He ballooned a lot of them. He, he didn't necessarily look a natural. He travelled with his usual amount of zest, but you'd expect that from a horse of his calibre. Mm. The ground was quite tacky at Sandown and quite testing at the best of times after rain. But I think Hinterland did have him beat at the last. I don't think anybody would argue that point. And no. uh, it's hard to no. know exactly how serious you, you can take him in the two-mile division now. Um, with so much coming up and coming in that, in that division. You can't write him off after one run, but he has now got it all to prove again, really, for me. Yeah, long way back for him. Um, before we sort of touch on the, the Paddy Power this weekend, we must extend our condolences, must we, Kevin, to our Australian Yes, counterparts. tragic news once again underlining um, you know, how dangerous this sport is for, for, our, for our jockeys. Uh, Desiree Gill, she... Um, she suffered fatal uh, head injuries in a, in a fall in Australia and we'd just like to send out our condolences to our family mm. and friends. Dreadful news. I think that's the second female jockey in Australia this year. to lose her life yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, in a matter of months and she rode four winners, didn't she, on one of the, uh, one of the away cars. She was an extremely well-liked and very experienced rider and um, it's just a shame for things like that to happen. It really brings you back down to work with a bang, doesn't it? Yep, day of the Melbourne Cup, rode four winners and, and then for that to happen was absolutely appalling. Uh, racing um, doesn't stop for anybody, unfortunately, and we move into this weekend with the Paddy Power Gold Cup. Um, just having a look at the, the betting as we stand, as we, we look across a glorious Cheltenham racecourse with the sun shining uh, on Presbury Park and beautifully encapsulated by, by Cleve Hill. We've got Dynast as a, a five or six to one favourite here. John Spirit is also vying for favouritism. Champion Court, who all three of us saw work this morning at Martin Keeley's yard, um, is now a general eight to one chance. Clip from tens this morning. Rajani Express, who won at the festival, is ten to one bound the gore one or two doubts about his participation 11 or 12 to one then it's 14 bar those um, bit of money for nadia de la vega on tuesday afternoon as well that's been um, clipped from bigger prices into around 14 to one lads where, where are we sort of starting are we looking to take on dynast and john spirit at the head of the market or are we keen on those two i'll be quite keen on opposing john spirit um i think the handicap that he won it was a good race but uh, 
winners of that race have got a really poor record when they come straight from that race into the Paddy Power. I don't think we've had a winner come from that and follow up in the Paddy Power for about 12 years. Having said that, he does look hugely progressive. So you're opposing him on a stats basis. Dave, would you be keen to take him on? Um, I would be quite keen to take him on, given that you know I, I quite like Katenko in the racing. Katenko has already beaten John Spirit at Sandown last year and yeah. put him to the sword that day. Yes, you could argue a case now that John Spirit's better off at the weights, but I think Katenko's performance here a couple of weeks after... Um, when he beat Fruce Rune, he just just showed you that he was a horse that was very much on the up. And they given were talking about the Gold Cup, given that they were talking, exactly, given that they were talking about the Gold Cup last spring, he looks off a mark to me that he can do something off on Saturday. The faster they go, the better for him. And we've we've had a walk of that ground out there myself and Kevin, and I think the ground won't be a problem for him. There's yeah. enough juice in that at the moment for him, as long as he doesn't dry out and too much. It was, fine. But it was pretty bad trials day, and he ploughed through that, didn't he? Absolutely ploughed through it. That's what yeah. I mean. You know, he, he, again, he's not similar to sort of what you're talking about with melodic rendezvous. Not, I yeah. don't think he's entirely ground dependent. As long as there's a bit of juice in that ground. I think he'll be fine. And am I right in saying he's only had four runs in this country, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and chased home Wickhill at Ascot and then won a couple at the back end, didn't he? So we haven't seen the best of him yet, have we? Still no, think there's more to come from him. Um, Kev, what's your starting point in the race then, if, you, if you're looking to sort well, of think, take on Dynas and John Spirit? I think it's a race that requires you to have a touch of class and I think if you are to kind of nestle upon two horses that do have that, yet you're looking at Dynast and perhaps Champion Court. And I think listening to Martin Keithley this morning, he was positive that the King George bottomed him out last yeah, season. And it did, didn't it? It was a brutal it, race. It was a it? brutal race. And the fact that he didn't quite get home over three miles in that desperate ground and he gave his all up to the point where he hit the wall, mm. that alone would have meant that it would have taken an awful lot out of him. And he said, even when he did beat Menorah in the handicap in April, um, he was getting lumps of weight, but he still won it well. He clocked a fast time. He said he still didn't feel yeah. that he was at his best then. That, that was a case of looking for a bit of money at the back end of the season wasn't it Indeed. a good opportunity but Just he wasn't 100 percent, was he and um he feels that he's got him in a really good place right now he still thinks he's he's ahead of his handicap mark and uh he has a lot in his favor he ticks a lot of boxes the trip's fine the course is fine the ground will be fine you could see him sitting off at the pace sitting handy and jumping away and putting himself into the race in a good fashion he's a class yeah, horse, he's a class he's, horse. A, he's a trier he really wants um, all the time he wants to I, try i do have a concern over the nast at, at two mile four i, I think he might want further and uh, that stems purely from um, the way he finished off his race in March behind Benefit. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what to make of that race, Dave, are you? I don't know what his trip is yet. No. St- I'm yeah. still unsure as to what... He's going to bolt it up over three at Aintree afterwards. Already, we didn't want to make comparisons with Grand Cru, but they are creeping in again. What We don't know now <laughs> We don't know now what Dunas' best trip's going to be at this stage. You'd um, expect a three-mile horse to finish off their race a little bit better, better than, he did. Two, than he did. He just wilted, didn't he? The horses are allowed a bad day every now and again, aren't they? And he, and he showed that that run was... You know, well, let's give credit to Beneficent. It was a very good performance yeah, from was, him. Yeah, yeah. But he could do no more than win at Aintree. I know it wasn't probably the strongest of races, but he's still absolutely zipped in. And that was three mile. Does he want a flat track? Right handed, even there's another case for that, you know. Maybe, maybe, although he was all right around Aintree, wasn't he? He was, so, yeah. Are we just going to afford him a day off? You know, and a, a poor day at the office at the Cheltenham Festival, and then and take that sort of run off his dance card. Other than that, he looks to have a very live chance, doesn't he? He looks to have a chance. I I just worry about the marker one five nine. I still think that's a bit too yeah, high. I, I do think that's too high. high. I think, given as, as Kev was saying, the way here he was surrounded by horses that were considerably inferior to mm-hmm. him. You know, with sort mm-hmm. of a, you know a good ten pound inferior. And he was he wasn't just one of them. They were all there. Yeah. I just think 159 looks a bit high Weak to me. race, weak race. Uh, I've been a fan of Rajdani Express for some time now, mm-hmm. and for me, he's my bet for the race, from the top of the market at least. I think his key attribute <coughs> is his jumping, which was evident at the festival. He didn't win by far, but he was exceptionally good over his fences here. Absolutely. It was a fair performance as well, wasn't it? I mean, he bounced back to form, you know, after a below-par effort mm. uh, at the back end of the season. He was yeah. a much better nick, wasn't he? And you can't forget that route at Kempton, can you? Where he beat them all by 30-odd lengths and plus. That was when he cemented my suspicion that he was a progressive type of a horse and he, he looks like he's going to be a good chaser. I think he's going to be better than his marker 157, at least I hope he, and he's going to need to be. Yeah. But Rajdani Express, he's top price 11-1 to 1 at the moment. I can see him going off at single-figure odds, yes. kind of 7 or 8-1 to, yeah, one, uh, eight to one in the day. He's got his stable mate, Finian's Rainbow, in at the top of the weights mm. and keeping his weight to down. Compress them. Compress them down. So he's keeping them down at about 11 stone 4 and uh, I think he's got a massive chance. There's every likelihood that there's going to be 16 or more runners. Is, is there anything at bigger prices that, that we like, lads? I mean, you put up a couple there that, you know, obviously Katenko's still available 14 to 1. Your horse, Kevin, is still available 10, 11 to 1, solid. But is there anything at bigger prices, 20 bar, that 
that you think could easily get in the four? Uh, if you're asking me one for a bigger price, then it's got to be Astrakhan. Right. Because strictly on you know strictly on a, a handicapping point of view, I think he's got a right chance on on Saturday. He, he ticks boxes, he, doesn't he? He ticks, he ticks plenty. It's the sort of race that you have a crack at him at at a big yes. box. It's not the sort of, I, I wouldn't touch him at sort of three, four to one for a lesser chase, no, no. but. It will Saturday and, and, and the demands of the test will bring out the best in him and I yeah. think at a big price you've got to give him a chance well there are two for me really uh, the first I don't know what the intentions are with Texas Jack but if he does send him over I know he does like a bit of a juice well he likes plenty of juice in the ground but I could see him hunting around at the back and getting into a bit of a rhythm and putting himself at least into the race at, one, at the latter stage and uh, he's got a lot of form that ties in with the likes of Lord Windermere he beat Marito last year at Leopardstown he well, has good form that Marito's not in the race aren't they they are yeah <laughs> I've heard that and he, he's very interested in horses Marito but I just think Texas Jack you know Noel Mead has always taught the world of him I, I think he's a good horse on his day around about 25 to 1 there you know there are worse each way bets if he turns up on the day again the ground is the worry the second horse at a massive price 40 to 1 Paul Nichols will come folly um, yeah, you he, could give him a chance you of, could, of getting in the frame, couldn't you? He's not handicapped to win a Paddy Power, and it would be a disappointing Paddy Power Gold Cup if Wilcom Folly did win the race. Having said that, it wouldn't surprise me if he was in the frame. So kind of a place-only bet, something like yeah, that, really. Something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. yeah, he'd probably get sort of 8, 9 to 1 just to get into the 4, wouldn't you? And you he has got plenty of experience with Cheltenham as well. So He was banged there at the last behind John Spirit, and mm. he, he clouded the last, and he just dropped away into sixth place. Walk on second last year, 22-1 to one this year. I don't think I could have him, to be quite honest. No, he's I, I, he's I the kind of horse that go win, though, isn't he, when <laughs> everybody's written him off? Yeah, I, I know what you're saying, but that was a, 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 an iffy reappearance, wasn't it, when he was on seat, and it's, it's not what you want yeah, to see coming into this. And I thought that was going to be my last go with him, really. Yeah, he, he's just one of these horses that's a nearly horse, isn't he? He's always going to be there, thereabouts. Yeah, I, I don't think I could have him. OK, well, that's the, the Paddy Power Gold Cup. Just to reiterate your selections, boys. Dave, what have you gone for? Um, I've actually done two in there, so I've done Katenko, and I have put a, a bit in for Ballinagor as well, who I think you? might be best fresh. Yeah, we haven't yeah. touched on him, have we? He, he routed a field at Warwick, didn't he? And then I was there that day, yeah. The festival. yeah. I think the thing was that they obviously had a Cheltenham plan in mind with him going into Warwick, so he had to win and win well because he was only a 120, 122, 123 right. radius going in. I think it came too quick for him. I think Cheltenham came too quick after Warwick. I think you can put a line through that. It wasn't a dreadful run at the festival. Though. It wasn't the worst wasn't run, but it, it no, just it came too soon. It, it was below expectations, but he missed a couple of fences. Say so he hadn't run at Warwick and he ran straight at Cheltenham and got beat 20 lengths. Everyone said, oh, he's run all right. Hasn't he bound the goal? Yeah, because yeah, obviously yeah. he's won by uh, a wide margin. Everybody's seen what he did tonight on Frankie and company. Exactly. And, uh, and they were expecting the same again, I think. Well, some terrific racing over the three days. This, this Paddy Power Gold Cup meeting is absolutely wonderful. Um, and, of course, we've got you know, terrific support card, perhaps on the Friday with Good Novice Chase and 205. I think they've moved that Novice Chase, haven't they? Have they? Yeah, because it used to be at the back end of the car, didn't it? They've shifted everything around a little bit, haven't they? So, so that one is televised, and that we're looking at uh, t- potentially Takan Desai versus Oscar Whiskey in a two-mile four Novice Chase. That is X-Factor stuff, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a pretty good race on paper. I have my reservations as to how far Oscar Whiskey might go over fences. I know, Dave, you do as well. Uh, I think <laughs> Takan yes. Desai, you know, he's... He, if they do manage to come up against each other, yeah, I mean, it, there's a, there are a good few entries in that race. Mm. You've got top Salubris of the range. would be interesting, wouldn't he? He is, yeah. He looks a chaser, doesn't he? I think you and I might saw him up at Musselburgh one day, Sam, and he, yeah. he, he really did look at a chasing type, so he'll be interesting if he does turn up. Uh, I think Oscar Whiskey might struggle over fences. Just, I uh, couldn't have him with counterfeit. Really? I really couldn't, no. <laughs> I mean, I've never, been, I, I've never been a fan of the horse. It's no secret that I've never been a great fan of the horse. I think his hurdling technique left plenty to be desired. Um, everybody says he was a good hurdler. He was good when he got it right, but when he got it it wrong and he did get it wrong he, he just didn't seem to get the gear down for me I'd, I've never liked his hurling style I wasn't a particular fan of him mm. maybe he'll treat the bigger fences with a bit more respect than he did the hurdles I don't know but I, I, I wouldn't be having him Right so you're against him Gordon Elliott likes to fire a few bullets what about Shrapnel? He has a good novice hurdle form in Ireland he's a solid horse he kind of lost his way for a little while but he came roaring back to form last year uh, he's won his last two He's an interesting horse over fences, yeah. isn't he? I wonder whether the wonderful charm might uh, be turned out again quickly. It just depends. Nichols has obviously got Salubrious in as well. Um, and, and some decent other horses to make I, up the I'll, the I'll put a word yeah. in for the Romford Pele, actually, because I saw him at Chepstow and he looked every inch a chaser and he was given a very nice, a very considerate introduction He stayed that on day. nicely, didn't he? It, it was a bit of a weird one at the last because he both dived at it but made ground at the same time and you threw for a stride or two, you thought he might get up. And he was only really ridden in the last sort of 400 yards to actually try and, and, and get yeah. the race. But um, it was a very considerate introduction and he looked really well in the paddock that day. I think he'll make a nice chase this year. I think the rest of the races on the Friday are, are all handicaps but the, the JCB Triumph Hurdle Trial on the Saturday, on the Saturday 
you've got Royal Irish Hussar won really nicely at Weatherby last well, time. Yeah, I'd yeah. be quite taken with him. Yeah. Um, so he's he's going to be a very exciting prospect over hurdles this season. And um, Alan King has Herod the Great in there, who won by six lengths at Warwick. Good professional, isn't he? He's also got Chakalo, who's done really well on the flat race. But there's a big word already for Chakalo, isn't there? It? It? it might well be the best uh, juvenile that Alan King's got yeah. this year. Yeah, interesting runner for John Ferguson as well, who's had a good afternoon at Huntingdon on Tuesday afternoon. He's got Royal Skies, who's 100 rated middle distance horse off the flat as well. So that's boiling up into a cracking little race. That. It could well be. It's always, it, it always gives you a good insight into where the juvenile stand early on. And we, um, we saw African Gold working this morning. He, um, really well, he might yeah. make his debut in an obviously's chase at 1.15. I'm no paddock expert or anything like that, but he was a really lean kind of athletic horse last year, and he looks to have filled out a little bit over, as you'd expect, through the summer. And he's obviously an exciting prospect over fences. Uh, he's been touted by a few as potentially a Gold Cup horse in the future. Yeah. I have my reservations. But I hope he does well. There's only ten entries, isn't there, Dave? But yeah. some belters. We've got Lebec shut the front door. Um, Spring Hill from Jim Colotti, who last time he ran a horse here when he won the Royal Sun Alliance. And Sam Winner as well, along with guests again of, of David Pipe. So all star cast, really. It is. And, and, and another one in there as well that I do quite like, actually, was Black Thunder, who a time mm-hmm. or two last year looked like he might win decent handicaps under bigger weights and always just had a little bit. Something always went against him in the race. He, you know, he was, yeah. he was travelling well here at the, the top of the hill when he, when he came well, down. Yeah, I thought that was a really decent introduction at Fontwell. Wonder if um, he get home over three miles. I think he's that's the only worry, isn't yeah. it? I, th- I think I think he'll just about get it. Carol. I mean, he seemed to get two five, two six, no problem. And I think I think he'll just about get the three. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's a user send over White Star Line giving way to way to those, but we'll he see. seems to be around forever, doesn't it's he? White Star Line. Is if he does, he's, yeah. he's in very good form. So if he did come over, we'd have to take him quite seriously. And of course, the third day of the, the Paddy Power Gold Cup meeting, um, the feature race is the, the Greatwood Hurdle, which looks a, a belting renewal again, as usual. Um, there's there's quite Quality races on the undercard as well. A good, really good novices hurdle. The supreme uh, trial is on. I mean, yeah. we're looking at uh, potentially another superstar, West Wizard. You heard yeah. about him? Yeah, we've I think everybody's well, we heard about him. him. As the uh, one of the, my horses, to one follow. of your horses to follow. Yeah, yeah. about yeah. a month ago, didn't we? And he's in against the Liquidator. Could be Sea Lord. Um, La Fontana as well. I mean, that that really is a, a terrific race to savour. But West Wizard is the one that's getting all the plaudits at the moment. Yeah, he's is, the most yeah. hyped horse, I think, of the uh, of the pre-season, really, isn't he? Well, I hope see see Lord stays in that race because uh, it'd be a fasc- yeah. you know what it'd be a really good benchmark. It'd be, good, to see. It'd just be a very to say. good benchmark yeah, if Sea yeah. Lord runs, I think, because he's guaranteed to run his race almost. I, I mean, he's come from he's come from left field in a way, hasn't yeah. he, Sam? He just progressed through handicaps, and they've always known what they had with him, and they always knew what they had in hand. You know, and I, I saw him at market raising, and I was very impressed with him that day. Both him and the, the second coffee looked like they were going to make him into a really nice, really nice hurdler. So he's a good benchmark, and let's hope he, uh, he takes part. Unfortunately, there's only eight entered um, at this stage for the novices chase, which is the the, uh, the Racing Post Arkle trial. But we've, we've got the likes of Dodging Bullets, Ray Star, Tanerko Emery, um, who's also in the Greatwood Hurdle as well, and Ted Veal, the county hurdle winner, mm-hmm. uh, could go in that as well. And then on to, on to the main event, really, the StanJames.com Greatwood Hurdle. Pine Creek is going to be towards the, the top of the list here as well. All the money's it? been for cash and go, hasn't it? Um, it gave me some amusement the other night, actually, on Twitter. He's been given... Um, Muscle, uh, mu- muscle therapy or something? Yeah, bodybuilding yeah. over the summer. Oh, yeah, which, uh, you look a bit pumped these days. <laughs> yeah, plump, yeah, that's the word for it. No, pumped. <laughs> <laughs> I think plump is more, more appropriate. Uh, but cash and go, I don't really know what to make of him. He's got a bit of a itsy-bitsy um, profile, but he could be a well-handicapped horse. I was hopelessly head over heels with Roland Starr after he won um, a Triumph Hurdle trial here earlier this year. Mm. He was my nap of the Cheltenham Festival and he you know, he didn't run anything like his best and uh, what I thought was his best at the time and he didn't run up to his best again at entry but Nicky Henderson has faith that he's better than that and mm. I hope that he might be if that's the case and 12 to 1 could be seen as a big price. I don't I'm know, what do you reckon of it, Dave? Have you taken any view on that race? I'm a bit disappointed that Mr Mole isn't going to be lining up. I would have loved <laughs> to have seen what he could have done here. It's mm. all right you laughing but you I would have Mr. loved Mole, to have seen. I, I just think he's such a talented horse. I know he sticks his head up and I know he's got problems but I just think a apart big field that, <laughs> apart, from that, apart from the fact apart from that but I just think you know what he needs you know we're we'll not going to but a big field you know yeah, with a uh, right hand rail to run against after us I think would have suited him yeah. anyway by the by the, the two that I'm sort of quite interested in and one is, 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 is I know we've sort of mentioned actually in the novice chase was Tanerko Emery mm. who mm. probably would have yeah. beaten Ray Astar yeah, at the but for a couple of little pecks at two out and one out didn't quite get away from the fence as, no. as quickly as Ray Astar if you take that on a straight Strict handicapping point of view. And I know it's always dangerous to do these things in small races, but off one four seven, it's interesting that he's even in here. Do you know, yeah, rather yeah. than going, why well, he's just not in the novice chase and nothing else. They've obviously thought one four seven. Yeah, that's not still not a bad mark. No. I think he's interesting off that mark. He'll love, love the ground, wouldn't he? He will he'll absolutely love the ground. 
And a bit further down, I thought of, of Tony Martin's Radera. He's got a very patchy profile, but um, they obviously thought him good enough to take part. I mean, a couple of years he took part in the... I think that's a massive each way price. He was good enough to take part in the in the grade two hurdle here a couple of years ago at this meeting mm -hmm. and then came back for the county hurdle, got no sort of a run on a couple of a couple of occasions he was he was sort of taking that and still finished eighth, staying on and, and didn't get beaten very far. And this will be his first time back at Cheltenham since then and I just think fifties looks big for a Tony Martin horse. I could see that running a decent race. I'll put a good shout in for Cashmere Peak who I think I think will run very well. He ran brilliantly on the flat and was, was only just touched off last time and I, I love John Quinn's horses. I think they they brilliantly campaigned in the main. I think they go exceptionally well he keeps them switched on they, they switch between codes and they seem to always hold their form which I think is a, a tremendous attribute for the trainer and for horses alike and I think Flags and Flair might run all right. He would do. Yeah, he absolutely yeah, bolted up didn't he? He did like here, he jumped yeah. in at the bottom yeah. of the straight didn't he in the, <laughs> the Fred Winter. Mm. It's worth mentioning if and but why not as well who won a good handicap hurdle this time last well, year. He beat Tanerko Emery. He did yeah and uh, it's a good piece of form he was mm. usually progressive last season I'm not entirely sure what he's done after that. I fancied him um, in the county hurdle and, and Timmy did a little bit of his Timmy Murphy weaving around yeah, and yeah. <laughs> slaloming through yeah, the field yeah. and ended up on the far side, which wasn't the place to be. It was Stanside Rail, if you remember, on that yeah, Friday yeah. when it was becoming bottomless. Uh, but he's another interesting contender, as is yeah. Court Minstrel. Um, on, on quicker ground, I'd be really interested in Court Minstrel. Yeah, I don't think, yeah. the bottom to, don't think they've got to the bottom of him yet. Yeah, well, Willie Mill had 30 quid of my money at 50s for the champion hurdle, but I, 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 that was prior to his run at Ascot, which was pretty flat. Um, I was just wondering whether he could be one that could progress a stone and, and sort of make it into a champion. I think he got, I was really impressed with him at air, the way that he yeah. just cut through the field and Adam Wedge and just quickened away. I think he does need quicker ground he though, doesn't he? He proper decent ground, yeah. doesn't he? Unfortunately, he's not going to get it pre-Christmas. That's and for sure. Napa, Napa the meeting, Dave? My nap of the meeting. Oh, I know you're asking, oh, where's that one coming from? Um, I suppose at this moment, given I've already backed it, I've, I've got to stick with Katenko, I think, for the Paddy Power. Yeah. I've got to stick with him. I think he's very, very solid, yeah. OK. I'll go, yeah, I'll go with uh, Radstein Express in the same race, okay. around about 11 to 1. This time of the day, we like to give a GG Alerts uh, a good plug, don't we, Kevin? Um, one or two horses to follow, perhaps, for the weeks and months to come. What, what's your dark horse? My dark horse is a maiden hurdle, a horse called Inish Turk Lad. I think he'll win next time out in the maiden, or he'll go close. He's, he's caught the eye in his last two runs. He came sixth at Punchestown, then third at uh, Wexford last time out. He jumps really well. I think he was given a poor ride uh, the last time. I wasn't really too keen on the way he was ridden. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, I, I think he's better than that. He jumps really well. He caught, he caught the eye, and I think, he, I think he'll do well in the maiden hurdles very soon. Okay. Um, I think the, the performance, uh, it's no real secret, but I, I really like the Fly Logic. I think mm -hmm. he's very much a horse to, to follow this season. Um, he clocked a seriously quick time. I know a lot, of, an awful lot of people are going on about how keen he is and how much he needs things to go his own way and he needs to dictate and all that. But I just thought he jumped really, really well. He, he winged some of his fences. When he got in short, he was clever and fiddly over, over him when he needed to be. Uh, I think he's an extremely talented horse. On the clock, the clock alone suggests that he's, 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 he's right out of the top drawer. And um, I'd be very interested to see where he goes. I'm not saying he's going to be an Arkle horse, but he's in that kind of mould. Uh, he's in the mix for those kind of races, and I can, okay. he's, he's going to win uh, grade ones. OK. Uh, Dave, have you got one for us? Yeah, I've got one. Um, it's a horse of Evan Williams's that I followed a little bit last year. It's a horse called Bullet Street, who came over from... From when well, he, he, he won a Limerick bump before um, Martin Hassett and then went to DBS sales and Evan picked him up for a pretty penny around about I think he probably got fifty thousand for him um, and we first saw him on a race course uh, behind Far West at Ascot in the faster race that turned into a bit of a sprint from the two pole I think what we saw that day was at least he got a turn of foot because he stayed with him in the sprint yes so we, we saw that day that at least he has got a turn of foot. and on the back of that he was sort of backed into favouritism a couple of times at Market Raisin and Ludlow. He's travelled like the best horse both times and unfortunately hasn't gone through with his finishing effort for whatever reason. I don't know whether there was a problem, but he starts this season. Given, given you know, the likes of Far West and the better of the juveniles was starting this season on marks of 140 plus, a mark of 116 looks very low. He's already been entered up in a couple of novice chases, but not run yet. So well, whether he's had a bit of remedial work done to his win. Quite or possibly. Like and I think off 116 he looks... Um, certain to win some races this okay. year. Bullet Street. Bullet Street. Bullet Another Street. one I wanted to mention. I know you, you fancy him for the... Um, for the Greatwood on, on Sunday, but Tanerko Emery, I'd prefer to see him in the Arkle trial. 
uh, earlier on yeah. in the day. And I think so, if he goes for that, I, he'll win. And, uh, <laughs> be interesting to see which way they go with it, wouldn't it? Yeah, if you, if it you went be. for the hurdle, it'd almost be a, a sort of it'd almost be a, bit, be a bit of a nod in itself, wouldn't it? Be a tip in itself, given yeah, that he's already he, had the one run over fences. And he's very much built for fences. Off of that. Yeah, very much built for fences. Yeah, he was. I saw him at your talks to that day, and he is. He is I think he's going to go places over fences, and I think if he does go for that Arkle trial, he's going to take a world of beating. He's a proper chasing type. We've got any competitions coming up, Kev? Yes, Paddy Power have put up three hundred pounds worth of prizes for us once again for a three-day competition running from Friday until Sunday um, where the first prize, overall prize, is going to be £85. The second prize is going to be £65. And the third prize is going to be £25. That's for the main competition. But there's also a little integrated mini competitions, um, £25 free bet prizes for the best strike rate, for the best nap performance of the day. Um, for the daily competition, you get a five-point betting bank that you can spend each day. And uh, win in each way, bets are acceptable, etc. And, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's always a very, very popular competition. And Paddy Power are good to us for putting up such good private money as well. And uh, if you want to enter... All you need to do is go over to Tipzone on gg.com, and if you're not registered already, then uh, you know where have you been? You need to go and register at Tipzone, um, and if you're already registered, then you probably know what to do already, and uh, it's nice and easy to enter. So get involved. Magnificent. Well, I think that brings us to the end of our um, our podcast, doesn't it, Kevin? It does indeed. We should just say well done to Tony McCoy, shouldn't we? Four thousand winners. We should. I was I was there when it happened. I was delighted yes, I, to I, be I, there. I saw you two gurning away on yeah, the, the main Kev were there, yeah. Yeah, it was quite a glamorous affair, apart from the fact that your two mugs were... Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was nice to get texts off your mates going, get off my telly. <laughs> get, get off my, my telly. telly. <laughs> that, yeah, was, yeah, that was quite yeah, nice, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for that. You're on yeah, the it was a great day. Yeah. It, was a great, it was a great day, and, you know, I was, you know, me and Kevin... I think, yeah, it was, it was, it was a pleasure to share the day with David awesome. Massey and, and, every, and everyone else. <laughs> and Tony McCoy. And Tony McCoy, and everybody else was there. And the fact that gg.com is closely associated with Toast the Race Course. Perfect, would And the fact that it's free racing there, and, you know, everybody just came along to cheer him on, and it was just brilliant. And, you know, JP McManus was there... All of AP's family came over, and it was just a brilliant day. The perfect, yep. the perfect day, really. It was. So, yep. And uh, well, couldn't have written the script any better. You could couldn't. You? No. And now we're uh, we're sitting uh, in Presbury Park, and we're looking forward to a massive weekend. To get weather like this, it's absolutely beautiful out there, isn't yep. it? It's it's just, yeah. A gorgeous Tuesday afternoon. I suppose it's, wor- it's worth noting as well that we walked the track earlier on, and the ground overall is is, is riding around well, good soft. And isn't it? I spoke so, yeah. to Simon Clay this morning. He doesn't anticipate a lot of rain on the run up to the weekend. Um, dry, overcast. I wouldn't have thought it would get much softer than it is already. No, so good jumping ground. That's a good point to leave it. Best of luck with your bets this weekend. Enjoy the racing. It's fabulous stuff. Thanks very much. I've been Sam Turner, joined by Kevin O'Malley and special guest David Massey. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.